As if US youth soccer wasn't bad enough, it's time to make it a little bit worse by removing one of, in my perspective, one of the most fun parts of the game for a reason re revolving around concussions, right? And before we get into this, I'm going to talk about a few things that have led to this and I'm going to be fully on board with certain decisions that are made. But the main reason of this clip is for me to rant about why not allowing young players to head the ball is fucking ridiculous, right? So this came as a result of a lawsuit that was filed in back in 2013, I believe, um, by the plaintiff. The, it was a result in several parents in California claiming that um, head injuries were not treated fairly and therefore they wanted the rules to change. They were seeking no financial um, damages, but rather changes to the sports rules uh, from limits on headers for children altering FIFA's substitution protocol. Substitution part, I will touch on Absolutely, okay. But so, so this is a, a, an actual quote from the lawsuit itself. So the suit seeks an injunction, an injunction that would change the way soccer is played at all levels. Children under 17 would be limited in how many times they're allowed to head the ball. The suit also seeks to require professional and other advanced leagues, which are currently limited to three substitutions per game to allow temporary substitutions while a player is examined for a head injury. Medical testing would also be available for soccer players who competed as long ago as 2002 and are now suffering from the effects of concussions. So this was a statement from this and the rule change comes after this class action lawsuit, as I mentioned, in the United States District Court of California. Thanks a lot, California. I'm glad I'm living here. Um, our, uh, this is according to the suit. Nearly 50,000 high school soccer players sustained concussions in 2010. I understand that high school you, soccer players. High school soccer. So um, I understand concussions a in a lot of sports is a huge issue. Humongous. Introducing more substitutions, and this is, uh, in the United States, you already have this ability to, to have flexible substitu substitutions in world football. It is a problem. If someone obtains a, a, a head injury, they might want to return to the field, and therefore when they come off, uh, to, maybe managers are more likely to try and get them on quicker because they're playing down a man rather than make the substitution, but most of the time they're limited to three. So there's a rule in place to try and adjust this so that if someone goes off with a head injury, they can put on someone temporarily that doesn't count. As a, as if it's a head injury, it's very serious. They need to be checked out. So the, 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 the part of altering the substitutions to allow for, for further checks and to look into uh, whether or not a concussion is actually present or not is absolutely fine. That is something that has to be done. Now, to get into the ridiculousness of this, the rule states that children under 11 are now going to be unable by the rules in US soccer to head the ball. So this has got many different problems for me, right? If someone suffers a head injury, runs into another person, runs into the goalpost and gets a, a head problem, that is fine. Don't let them back on the field. Don't let them head the ball. Treat them for concussion. These things happen in football. If I would be astounded to see someone under the age of 11 who could kick the ball hard enough in order to cause a concussion by someone else heading it. And one of the parts is it's a, it's a crucial part of the game, of learning the game. Headering the ball, I, I don't know what balls people are playing. It They actually have to be inflated to a certain caliber to allow it not to be so hard for these kids to play. And I don't know why they're making it seem like heading the ball consistently. Unless someone's heading it every time they get the ball and just wanting to head it nonstop, they're not going to suffer that much damage from heading the ball in play. Now, this is cloudy because people are going to be like, oh, well, you haven't suffered a concussion from this. My kid did this and we don't want them heading the ball at all. Well, if your kid already suffered a concussion, he shouldn't be playing until that is, for, that is further checked. But to, to limit everyone under the age of 11 from heading the ball in, world, in, in US soccer is crazy to me. It is simply making the game less enjoyable than already is. It's even worse than making competition not available. and Everyone wins. Goals don't count. That's the next step. Play with the sponge ball. Goals don't count. Well, Everyone runs around holding. Why hands. couldn't I guess if they're trying to prevent the concussions more from happening? Why couldn't you use a softer ball or a less inflated ball? That that's that is. So, a, I would be okay with that. Because I, I, under, I understand the the concept of all people. I understand the concept of like pro, like protecting kids from concussions. It's why you also see like the NFL is seeing not the NFL football, my football, American football, uh, less youth enrollment. Yeah. More parents are not letting their kids play. And I'm someone who's in favor of getting rid of kick and punt returns completely because we see it so prevalent in the concussions there. But the difference with this, though, is I, I get I, I get 11 years. I understand why because it's a young age. And it probably has to do scientifically with the brain still forming, growing, yep. your skull maybe not fully matured, right? I'm going to safely assume. Dude, look, put Peter Check helmets on all of them. It sounds funny, but like that would protect well, it. But like the difference, though, I see with, with soccer is, or football is... Uh, heading is actually a major part of the game. 
the kick and punt return in the NFL is not a major part of the game. Yeah, you're getting rid of special teams. I get it. It's not a major part of the game. Uh, in soccer or football, whatever the hell I'm going to call it, I don't care. Uh, that's I, the cross. Uh, yeah. In terms of defense, everything I've watched, a lot of the time you're using your head to get the ball out of there. And I think the last thing you want is guys going up for bicycle kicks and kicking people in the face. <laughs> yeah, exactly. and, and I, that's what I'm saying is like, instead so of hitting the ball use now. A, use a sponge ball. Instead of, not, a spon not a sponge ball, I tweeted but you get out, what I mean. You took the words right in my tweet. I said, they're prohibiting headers now. What's going to happen is that everyone's going to be wrapped in bubble wrap or, and play or, with sponge balls. Or, or, or in practice and not a game, I know it would make a difference because you're learning with a different type. You use a sponge ball and helmets. Therefore, you're less in, because if you prevent that happening in practice, yeah. it just, there's, there's a fine, there's a line. I get that there's a fine line between these two because there's fundamentals that you need to learn. And that's a fundamentally part of the game is how to use your head. Yeah, and but it's not just that. So under so it's basically players ages ten and younger will be prohibited from headers, while those aged eleven to thirteen <laughs> restrictions will the when did restrictions. You, so it's like, is there someone gonna go be that's like number five? He's headed it twice. All right, five. No more heading. See that no, no more heading. All right, so there's gonna have what, someone uh, monitor who's what, heading the ball. What age did you start competing in like there was league soccer? As soon as I could run. As soon as I could write, six years old, I was playing the win. Okay, six. And so was everyone else. That's Five, six years old. So six. Would you say... And I can't even be... remember if I could hit the ball at that age because no one could kick the ball high enough. It's only when the goalkeeper would punt it. That's I, awesome. There's a lot of people out there. Trust me, there's a lot of people that are talented. You're going to show me videos, send them the link. Oh, this 11-year-old can kick it as hard as Ronaldo. No, he can't. Shut up. But no one is going to be able to kick the ball hard enough at that age. I don't think, and this is me just being negative because it's changing the game. I've lived in America for five years. You don't mature you, you don't teach the youth enough of the fundamentals that's why there's not as many youth players coming through the system as the united states would want for being such a massive country you could potentially have one of the best soccer teams nationally if you were to to, to sculpt these kids from an early age they already have the competition of all these different sports so what happens next and like what what is most frustrating is this is a role that's been changed where's the role in high school for american football Where's the rules for that? Where's the well, rules for that's, American well, football as a whole? Well, that's where, like, I, someone replied to your tweet saying they're focused on the wrong sport and the lawsuit is on the wrong sport. It's, it trust me, 50,000 recorded concussions is, a, is an issue. In, I, tr I, I apologize if there's been people that have suffered the, the major uh, consequences of concussions and went on to serious damage. It happens in sports. It is what, part of the risk you play when you play sports and physically compete. I'm not going to defend that. If you can put in rules to adjust substitutions the to difference, allow... Here's the difference. Here's the difference. Here's the difference. If the concussions are proving that it's causing CTE, which is the major breaking fine that, A, the concussion movie coming out is going to highlight, and, of course, what we see in the NFL. If they find that 11-year-olds, you know, scientifically, research-backed, all that stuff, from soccer, are causing, like, it's choking the brain, right? Yep. That's a major problem. If they're finding that it's not... <laughs> tough one to say. Not as bad... Or there's no, or there's not uh, permanent damage being done. That's where you have to make the distinction. Well, they're, they're, they're if they're make, finding they're at ten years old there's permanent damage being done, sure, then you well, gotta they're making be careful a, with concussions. They're, making, they're basically taking it from what I understand is that if someone suffers a head injury and then goes back on and continues to hit the ball, of course. Well, that's, that's on the cause, that's, but that's on that's the, the that's on the coaching. And that's why they're trying that's to on the development league. That's why they're trying to put in more. That's on the school. The, 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 one of the examples they quoted in one of the articles, I've got like three phones here because I'm trying to pull up all the articles that I can find to try and justify want, this madness. But one of them was in the World Cup when Kramer, the Germany player, suffered some severe problems. I think I'll pull up in this one. Suffered some problems and then he was allowed to continue. He looked dazed on the field. That's a coach's decision as well. Coaches need to be more aware of the problems, how to uh, spot a concussion from an early age. As far as taken from the world, world football as a context, it's not been brought up as a major issue. I think that when someone has a head injury, we need to take the, the most precaution possible. They should be coming out the game. They shouldn't be allowed to go back in, even if they wrap a bandage around their head. There's been guys like John Terry who's been whacked in the side of their head. His head's bleeding. He wraps up and goes back on the field. That's stuff that you can address. Not kids at 11 years old hitting the ball. When I don't think that it's... I, I don't know. It's, it's honestly... No, I agree. It's, I agree. It's I complicated agree. to talk I about. But I'm not, I'm I just think just... that in the, the long run, it's going to affect... Um, the growth of players in the U.S. because heading is a huge part of the game. But we want to know what you guys think. Do you think that this is a Ooh. just decision to adjust this role in the sport? Do you think that there has to be um, more, I would say, options explored, whether it be using a softer ball, whether it be including protective helmets from, you, uh, from kids Come of on. a young age? You know, you know it would be hilarious to see 22 kids 
with Peter Check helmets on yeah, at would, 10 years old. And if it could allow them to head the ball still and enjoy all the, the fun of scoring that header or clearing the ball, then, let, then so be it. But um, at the moment, then, it's going to be changed. Till then, work on your bicycle kick, kick, yeah. kicks. Kick. And make sure to kick them in the face. Couldn't even say it! Well, could you play kick, 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 kick